Hi, this is Stefan from Bezero, and we've just published a beginner's guide to terraforming Mars, where we're, we're helping players survive their first few games. And one area that I would like to really dive deeper into is the first turn, the first set of actions where you are going through your initial hand of 10 cards and cutting it down to size. So I have in front of us here the corporation cards uh, mixed up, as well as the the cards, uh, the player cards themselves. So I think what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll pull two of the corporation cards, pick one, we'll talk about the differences between them because that's what you would do in your first turn. And then we'll go through the 10 cards that you pull out for random for your first hand. So here we go. So our first two cards that we're looking at here are Thorgate, which is a power card, a power corporation, focusing around making power easier to, to obtain for, for the corporation. And then Ecoline, basically the same card, but for plants and for making forests. So forests are cheaper, and then you have some forest production, and you have some base, forest, uh, base plants to, to generate at the beginning of the game. So um, they're both really good to, to talk through a strategy. So we'll do, we'll do Thorgate, and we'll do Eco Lion at a different time. So we'll pull 10 cards out. So our first 10 cards. <clears throat> We're looking at uh, trees. So the way I look at these is I try to I try to separate these cards into kind of categories about when when I can play them and how useful they are and how much do they match my corporation. So trees is going to be playing in the early mid game, and it's going to give me a a bunch of plants to produce, which is really nice. And then it'll give me like a point, which is fine. So I'll put that into the possible speculative pick. Imported GHGs, this is actually a really good card because it's, it's, it's cheap. It produces a considerable amount of thermal heat. It's a space card, so if I had some of those resources, I could, I could pay titanium to make this even cheaper. So I'll put that into the pick category. Hackers, I don't like cards that give me negative points, generally speaking. This card is, is interesting because it hurts the opponent for two, two production. Of, of money, but it also hurts my production of power and then gives me some some production of money in the in the process. So I'll put that into the no category. Um, I, I wouldn't pay for it. I wouldn't pay three point three three coins three three mega bucks to to purchase this card. Um, and I could play it easier because I am Thorgate and Thorgate has an easier time of getting power. But I just generally don't don't like these cards. Windmills power card. It's cheaper for me goes into the take category. Noctis Farming. So this is a decent card. It's it's an early pick card because you can you can play it quite rapidly because of the um, the temperature requirement is is fairly low. So we can put this in the keep category. It's it's not going to produce a lot for us. It's just producing mega bucks, but it also gives us a point. Vesta Shipyard. This is a great card. It's inexpensive. It has titanium production. It counts as a Jupiter. Jupiters are really good cards because you can use them for fueling other point generation cards. Mining area, same thing. You're going to be producing on a mining area, um, what, you know, whatever. If you, if you put it on a steel or you put it on a titanium spot, you're going to produce one or the other. Um, and tile placement cards are usually pretty pretty decent. This one requires you to place an, an area that is adjacent to another one of your tiles. So that's that's the drawback. That, that's what makes it harder to play this one. But this goes into the keep category. Open city. This could be our uh, tile, except that it requires 12% oxygen, which is towards the end of the game. I don't want to hold on to this card the entire game. I'm going to put that into the no category. Miranda Resort. So this is another Jupiter card, which is great. It gives you one dollar per Earth card that you have in play, and then a point. So I'm looking at my cards, and I don't see any Earth cards. And my next card's not an Earth card either. So I'm gonna I'm gonna veto this card because I can't I can't leverage it early on. 
And I don't know if I'll ever be able to leverage it. So the last one here is Corporate Stronghold. And it has a uh, well negative two points, which is which is a penalty. But you're building a city, and you're building a city for really cheap. This could actually even be our card that can help play the mining area. So I'll definitely put this in the keep category. So I've got six cards, and our desired range is typically four to six. And you can see how naturally that that four to six happened while I was getting rid of these, going through these cards. And I'm going to put the trees into the do not take category because I've got enough and I can't play this until the mid game anyway. So these become my, my keep category for Thorgate. Um, I didn't get a lot of power cards, but that's, that's okay. I mean, sometimes that happens and I'll get power cards coming up. Um, probably in the early picks. Let's do another one. So I'm looking at the top two cards. They are the United Mars Initiative. So this card is really focused around helping you get terraforming rating. Terraform rating. Um, and so you get a you get to play a three points to get a terraform rating, which is really cheap. And you can do it if you've gotten a terraform rating that that turn. The downside to this card is that early play. You, it, it's difficult to get that initial terraform rating, right? You're focused on production, not winning the game. So in the beginning of the game, that might not be the best card for you. The United Mars Initiative, United Nations Mars Initiative, um, also could net around 14 points, which is a lot, but it's not the 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 best of the cards. I don't like this card too much. Um, although people generally consider it pretty powerful. And Ventrix is another card that I don't consider very powerful either. So it's got a couple things about it that make it very different than the other cards. So first off, it's got a science symbol. Science symbols are really, really, really cool because science cards require you to have other science symbols and a number of them, depending on how complica complicated the science is. So this gets you a leg up there. It also works really well for the, um, there's a scientist award, which has, if you have the most science, you get, a, you get an extra five points. The effect of it is that you have more flexibility when you play these cards. So we saw earlier that we had a requirement to have negative four temperature, negative four temperature to um, play the trees. And so this guy could play the trees at um, negative eight. You also get $45, which is really 45 megabucks, which is really good. And then you also have three on your first action. You're going to be drawing three base cards, which is, which is neat. It gives you a little bit more flexibility, but oftentimes those cards don't match up with your strategy. So you might have one card that's useful for you. You can always sell a card though for a, for a dollar. So let's put pull our ten cards. So right off the bat, I've got Comet. Comet would be more of a speculative pick. It's like a mid-range cost. It's a little bit more on the expensive side. And it'll give you two terraform rating, and it'll, it'll help you get towards towards your goals. And then it also destroys plants. So if like somebody took Eco Line, this would be a good card you can play in the first turn because you can destroy some of their plants. That goes into the maybe category. So Caretaker Contract, I do not care for this card too much. And the reason is because eight... Thermal, eight heat, can turn into one terraform rating by raising the temperature. This becomes a decent end game card when I'm trying to spend my my heat energy in another way. Because once you once you max out the temperature of the planet, the the heat energy doesn't have a whole lot of use unless you have um, the thermalist. So this is a good way to get points, but only at the end of the game. And so do I want to hold on to this card until we have zero degrees? And the answer, to that, and I don't know if I'm going to have enough heat production. So we'll put this into the maybe category, but probably not. Water import from Europa. So this is a cheap way to generate a lot of oceans. And the, the added bonus is one, it's, it's 12 megabucks, but then also it uses titanium. So if I had a strong titanium import, I could use this card. It also produces a lot of points if I if I have invested a lot into Jupiters. So this goes into the maybe category as well. 
we have energy savings. So energy savings is is neat for an endgame card because at some point I'm going to have a lot of cities on the board. If I have a lot of cities, then I can produce a lot of power really quickly. And power can be used to fuel a lot of science-based buildings, actually. So um, this would go into the speculative purchase pile as well. We're not seeing a lot of great cards for this one. Space Mirrors. So this is a good card because you're going to be producing uh, power cheaply. And power is really good for science anyway. So we'll put this into the yes category. Underground Detonations. So this also does the same thing as the Space Mirrors, but it does it instead for, for thermal energy. We'll put this into the speculative pick. The reason why is because two thermal production is not, not great. But then again, the underground detonations could work really well with the caretaker contract. So I might, I might tie those together and, um, and see if I can do an end game strategy with them starting from turn number one. Because the underground detonations would need time to build up. Ironworks, uh, this would be a quick way to produce oxygen without building forests. And then you'll also generate some steel with it. Um, if that would go really well with space mirrors too. S research. So this is a great card for Inventrix because it's going to produce two science symbols. And the science symbols will drive your later science cards. And then you also get to draw two cards so it will replace itself and it will give you another card draw. Which is pretty powerful, uh, especially in the mid game. I would put this into the keep category. Big Asteroid. This could actually pay for your Space Mirrors, your Comet, your water import from Jupiter. It's got four of these four of these uh, Titaniums. It also has two Thermal Energy. So this would be a good card to pick as an early strategy card. And then and we've got a lot of money, so we could we can make that work. And then Deep Well Heating. This gives you power and Thermal Energy. It's just a good card to take. So I'm looking at five cards here. And five cards is... 15 megabucks. I'll have 30 left over. That's enough to pay for the big asteroid. I could potentially pick up one more card that I could utilize after playing the big asteroid within the first two or three rounds. And I'm going to do Comet. And so that's our six cards. In our Surviving Terraforming Mars video, we talked about how you want to have four to six cards, and we ended up at six. We could do five and be totally okay with that. Let's do one last one. So I've got two of my favorite cards in front of us, um, Saturn Systems. Saturn Systems is a Jupiter card. So we saw a lot of Jupiter cards that produced a lot of points with having more Jupiters. And so this would actually give you one point with that anyway. The other thing to note here is that it produces a Titanium every turn, and that's used to fuel a lot of the Jupiter cards. And then whenever you play a Jupiter card, you get an extra Mega Bucks. The second one here is Tharsis Republic. And this one has... A similar kind of situation. So it's whenever anybody plays a city, you get a mega bucks, and then whenever you play a city, you get three, three mega bucks to go with it. So you get a production or three and, and three mega bucks, and this plays really well with all the other city cards that are out in the game. And they both have similar, similar uh, starting money. So what we're going to do, we'll do Saturn systems. So geothermal power. Is our first card that came up. It has a lot of a lot of production of energy of power, which is great, and it doesn't cost a whole lot. I want to put this in the keep category because power can fuel a lot of cards. Adapted lichen. So adapted lichen is also a great card because it has most of these plant cards have requirements for playing them, and that's that's can be that can be pretty rough. This one has none, and it gets me a head start on producing plant production, which is amazing. To put that into the keep category. Giant Ice Asteroid. So this is a huge card, and it's not one that I would like to see typically in my opening hand. And the reason is because it costs 36 mega bucks. It does a lot of stuff. This would be a multiple turns of your starting game. So we would put this into the speculative category. Aerobraked Ammonia Asteroid. So I don't like this card typically. And the reason is because you're spending a lot of money on a good amount of production, actually. But the harsh part is the the microbes. I've got nothing to do with the microbes. And microbes are a rare card set. I mean, we went through 30 cards, and we, well, 20, 
four cards, and we haven't seen any microbe cards yet. And so they're not they're not particularly common in this set of the deck or at the base game. So I would recommend not purchasing this unless it unless it matched your strategy. So we're seeing a first um, the first Jupiter card and for this for this corporation, and the requirement is already met, which is great. And so that's what usually would make this card hard to play. It's got a ridiculous amount of production of everything. In fact, I might even sacrifice this geothermal power so that I can keep the beam from the thorium asteroid. We'll put this in the keep category, even though it's expensive and it might be a multiple turns to play it. It would pay off pretty rapidly. Moho area, it's another great card. I'm starting to build up these really expensive cards though, so I might not want to purchase all of them. But Moho area is a four thermal production, which is also really, really great. And I might have a thermal strategy here. I have another um, Jupiter card, which is great for Callisto Penal Mines. Um, produces some energy, produces some some points. That also produces points. So we'll put this in the keep category. Adaptation technology. So this gives us the Inventrix power. I'm not a huge fan of this card. It doesn't actually come into play all that often because it's very... It's not terribly common that you are within two like ratings of one of these categories to build something. Um, there's a lot of cards with a lot of requirements, but you're either solidly on one side or the other of those requirements. I'm going to put this into the probably not category. Electro Catapult. This is an amazing card for the first, first couple rounds. It requires um, it has max, max oxygen requirements. And... It has to have a power to produce it, um, to go into it. And I also have to feed it with, with uh, plants or with steel. But it produces $7. I want to put this into the potential category, but I have to find a way to produce power rapidly, and I have those. And then also produce some steel or plants, which I don't have. Power grid, if I take these two power cards, I might as well take this power grid card, because this will be three power for not a lot of money. Um, possibly even more, depending on how I draw. So I'm looking at six cards to keep and four cards to get rid of. And the Electro Catapult's uh, definitely on the maybe side. And I could even go up to seven if I, if I felt pretty antsy with this. And I, and I do. So I'm going to put this one into this category. And do I need all of these cards? And I would say yes. Except we could get rid of the power lines. Because I have a lot of thermal production with the thorium asteroids and the th geothermal power. So here I've got six cards to get going with. And that's on the upper end. I also have a lot of money, so if you really wanted to keep the power grid, you could and not have any any big negative outcome from it. And that would be even half our half of our money. And so the 21 would go towards these. And I could even fuel probably two of the cards initially. So if you like this type of content, going through and thinking through some of these games, uh, drop me a like, hit subscribe, and um, and let me know in the comments below. And if you disagreed with any of the the thoughts that I had or, or thought process that I went through um, or if you had some of your own input that you would uh, you would have preferred let me know in the comments below and uh, we'll produce more content like this if if uh, if you like it